YWAM does training and evangelism and mercy ministries, there's a whole story behind that which is which the grandparents can tell, which is a group of clueless people going about their business but with open hearts and then God intervening in some way. It did not come out of planning meetings, except if we plan to pray. There were other moments uh, where, where I can remember being in Osaka, Japan, where God was dealing with us about our repentance, about, in this case, our idolatry. And it was the other side of the ship vision, where we had already entered into negotiation and purchase of a ship in New Zealand. And yet we had taken our eyes off of Jesus and we'd become so animated with excitement about, you know, as a bunch of sort of Jesus people, many of us were kind of ex-hippies and we didn't take ourselves too seriously, but the birth of a vision for a university and, and uh, stewardship of, of large vessels was a bit intoxicating to our youthful pride. And so God dealt with us about the, the arrogance and idolatry that it entered our hearts. And of course, you can't see pride. It's like a disease of the eyes. It's a, you have a blindness to it until the gift of the Holy Spirit comes in, in conviction. And so we lay on the floor there in that hostel. I remember there was bad food, the housing was difficult, and we were heavily <laughs> under the hand of God. And there was a deep sense of godly sorrow. It wasn't condemnation. It wasn't religious guilt or some kind of uh, Freudian angst. It was really a sense of godly sorrow that we had we'd hurt the Lord by taking our eyes off of Him and that childlike faith that we had had imparted to us as a legacy of people like Corrie Ten Boom. We had already begun to see ourselves as a little too clever, a little too sophisticated in our early successes. <music>